There's nothing more fun than pushing that camera button and hearing that yeah. shutter go uh, off. There's something more fun than that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Debbie? <laughs> Deborah? <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I love photography. <laughs>
they that's what they're looking for because that's what they've been told to look for. You know, yeah. they, they've asked their friends or their buddies, what kind of camera do I want? You need a full frame mirrorless camera. And then they come in and we explain why they might want it or why they might want something else, you know? But that's, that's what they come in looking for a lot of times. What do they walk out with a lot of the times? Fuji instant film. <laughs> Is that mirrorless? <laughs> yes, it depends. It depends on the customer. I mean, if, if they're starting out fresh and they and they don't have anything, a lot of times they'll go with something smaller, you know? If they're already a Canon or an Icon shooter, they know what they want. They're coming in for that. Um, but if, you, if, if they've just been told that that's what they want, they'll come in, they'll look at the cameras, they'll play with them. A lot of times they're surprised by how large they are because they're thinking, oh, small mirrorless camera. And then they'll come in and realize that's not necessarily the case, which is actually a good thing because we can get rid of that myth too, because everyone thinks, well, if it's mirrorless, it has to be small. And that's not necessarily the case. Well, as we're gonna see right here. Yeah, exactly. This is the Canon RP. That's the R. R. With their, that's the R with the big 2870F2. So, the advantage of this one. body is about 30% smaller than a 5D Mark IV. You put this lens on it and it's almost the same weight and size. And that's a great example of how they're not small, but there's not a lens like that from anyone else really right now. I mean, it's, it's kind of a niche lens and it's pretty amazing, it's sharp as can be. And, and I think that's, that says something on too a lot about what we're seeing with optics these days is that, yeah. you know, we, we've heard so much that you need prime lenses and you need to shoot with prime but the zoom lenses being made by these manufacturers, you know, allow you to buy three lenses that cover an extreme amount of yeah. range. For uh, sure. And, yeah. and sometimes a very small package. Uh, like for example, we, this is the Olympus and that's a, this is a 300 millimeter, Jody? That's the 300 F4 with the two X on it. So this is equivalent to a 600 millimeter lens, which was obviously probably that high with as fat, a prime. Right. And with that 2X converter, you now have in this small package, everywhere from, um, this is the, just the 300, or is this the, it's the, the 300, 300 F4 so, with the 2X on So you got a 600 millimeter equivalent and, and a 1200 millimeter. A 12, it's a equivalency to a 1200. No, it's just a, you know, in a, th now this is actually kind of the opposite of what you're seeing here. I mean, look at the size of package. You got 1,200 millimeter reach, hand holdable, hand heldable, hand holdable. Hand sure, holdable. sure. Hand heldable. You hand heldable. And that's kind of like uh, an what Phil was talking about. The DSLR world didn't have this large of a selection. You didn't have this. You didn't have. You had 36 by 24 or APS-C. Now you've got this. This actually, the technology has broadened now. Yeah. So you actually have more as technology is going on, you're getting more options for the, when the person comes in. Yeah. Now one of, one of the holdbacks, let's talk about why mirrorless. If, if you're going to go mirrorless, there's a lot of reasons why mirrorless works. And for a long time, a lot of people didn't feel they would see through the viewfinder the same way as you see through a DSLR viewfinder. You don't. They're, they're different, they're but different. There are, you, you can see more, you can work in, in uh, different lighting conditions a little more easily. Everything comes off of the sensor, so everything you're seeing. You can actually see your exposure, which yeah, is huge. Uh, yeah. So yeah. you're seeing what you get is yeah. what you see in, in, your, in your viewfinder. Right. And these things are a lot higher res now than they've ever been before. It's really pretty incredible right. that if you take your eye back and forth, it's kind of hard to discern the difference between light and dark um, and the whole view. When I was gonna switch to my sweetheart Mary Jane's dismay, I was in Jackson with the O, O, the? OM1? OM1 Mark, EM1. EM1 5 Mark II. That's to try Olympus. and switch, Olympus. And we tried it and you couldn't yeah, move the camera. You couldn't enough. see, it was, right. and that's, and then I realized mirrorless wasn't for what I do, which is birding, until this came out and you set this on high refresh on the viewfinder and it is. This is the M1X, is it? Yeah, it's the X. And it is, it's sort of like a DSLR. It's that good. Yeah, the, the, the feature set on that now. It's so good that Mary Jane has now eclipsed me in uh, photo quality. She's actually 
better than I am. How about ability? <laughs> ability. <laughs> what did I say? You, quality. Quality, okay, ability. Um, before we go much further, we should say that there are several different mirrorless uh, formats that we're working with. Mm -hmm. We have uh, a micro four thirds format, which is a, a small sensor, which is inside these cameras. You can almost take the lens off. Let's take the lens off to show the sensor. So you can see it's a, a much smaller sensor. Then you have APS-C, which is here, which is the next sensor size up. Um, and then you've got full frame. And then this is the next sensor up from full frame, which is, uh, as we heard in our previous video, large, large form format. Does large not format. get me started, okay? <laughs> and the one we don't have here, obviously, is uh, what we call real true medium format, which would be on uh, larger Hasselblads and the, the phase one camera yeah. systems. So uh, almost every company is adopting the uh, mirrorless strategies t today and uh, the benefits that come along with those. And they've actually made the cameras better performance wise, correct? Oh, yeah. So Most definitely. Technology doesn't stop in any aspect. It keeps going. The, the mirror box is going to be gone and technologies continue right. to get better. Well, and one of the huge advantages is the calibration of the lens to the sensor. You know, that's something that we deal with constantly on conventional SLR cameras. People are always coming in with their glass, wanting it to be calibrated to the camera body because there's always a little bit of a difference from the mirror to the lens and they have to get the little micro adjustments. With these, you don't really have to do that. <laughs> the, the other thing that uh, makes a big difference in these cameras is, um, and I'm gonna try to kind of give it in a relative sense of things. Um, maybe you wanna hold the, the, the Hasselblad up because I think that's a very good example. It used to be that uh, because of the mirror box and all the mechanics that between the back of the lens and the film plane itself, there was quite a bit of distance. And now, as you can see with this camera, uh, there's a sensor which doesn't even sit on the back. I mean, because the back is a viewfinder. So halfway through here, the, between the back element and the sensor, you're now talking very small uh, distance, flange to uh, sensor distance. And that gets to be very noticeable, specifically on some of the Nikons and the, the Canons, because they had to re-engineer a lot of their lenses. And of course, they put because larger- Because you also have the re-engineering because the pixels are, a, are in a valley. Yes. They're in a cup. So you also have to have light coming back straighter. Yep. And the, you know, that makes it all very complicated, specifically because you're talking extreme angles that light's coming through right. and making that, uh, that uh, th and hitting that sensor. Um, the manufacturers for these sensors are using micro lenses and they're tilting uh, somewhat the wells of the sensor so that they can uh, capture that without any kind of uh, color differentials and so forth. So there's quite a bit of really cool engineering going on there. It also is very important to note that autofocus is actually derived right from the sensor. So you're actually focusing on the film plane itself. In a and you don't have the, the cessation of focusing when the mirror's up. Yeah. And actually, some of these cameras, um, the Sony A9s and the uh, new A7R4, I believe, have non-blackout shooting. So, you know, you don't even know your your you don't even see like the frame blinking between uh, the shots. The only way you know you're actually capturing the shot is they have a nice gray frame in there that kind of like just that would, flashes. That would ruin me. <laughs> well, I, I couldn't. Uh, you can hear it. I mean, you can turn okay. the sound on so you can hear it. <laughs> But so yeah, it means that a lot of things are changing. Um, and it's changing for the better for us too. And I think we'll see a lot of things change as we move into the, the future. Talk about how uh, these cameras are selling relative to other things. What are you well, seeing in the I, marketplace? I, I kind of did some numbers on Roberts for this year, January 1 to today, and I was really surprised. I did not know what I was gonna find. All of our body sales, which is really, really, really surprised me. I think it's maybe higher than the industry standard is our DSLR sales are only 12% more than mirrorless now. That is yeah. essentially, as far as I'm concerned, next month could change, it's 50-50. I mean, that is a huge increase in market share for mirrorless. Now, when you go to a consumer low-end camera and an APS-C smaller sensor, a DSLR takes off because they're less expensive. Manufacturing's been out there a long time, it takes less time to make them, right. the price point is the case. But in 36 by 24, which is not full frame, it's 36 by 24. 
I'm confused. Mirrorless is 42% above DSLR. So that's really, that's where technology is going. Yeah. So it, it means a lot of differences. Now, there are some rumors I'm hearing on the street, and maybe you can tell me whether you know, there's any, there's a lot of talk that, you know, Nikon's probably not going to develop any more uh, DSLR cameras. Maybe Canon might not either. Technology doesn't stop. Right. That's the future. There'll be people that, you know, we sell film, a lot of film. There are people that buy film, it's fun. There are people that'll buy mirror box cameras because they're fun and nostalgic, but technology marches on. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I think we've got to realize in technology, and while we're not experts on this, we're certainly hearing it, is the one reason why most of these camera companies have got to start moving towards mirrorless, uh, especially the ones that were a little slow getting into it, is the fact that the sensor technology is going to change, the camera designs are going to change rather radically in the next three to five years. Specifically, I'm talking about the um, new shutters, the global shutters, as they're called. And essentially what this means is that you're going to be able to do all sorts of new things because you're not going to have a shutter mechanism in the camera. You're going to have on or off, and on and off at such rates that you can't really believe you can turn something on or off that quick. And in addition to that, rather than feed off the corners as a lot of these sensors do, and essentially, so I can sort of describe this to you, a sensor right now takes the data and moves it off to the edge, drops it off to the uh, contacts on the side and moves it out. What we're gonna see on new camera systems, and we're sort of halfway there with some of the technology, is the fact that essentially when you take a picture, it's gonna be recorded and it's all gonna dump off at once. So, you push the button, it turns on and off with so two thousandth of a second, sixtieth of a second, whatever it is. The image drops into a buffer and you're ready to shoot again that quickly. You're not going to be feeding off. You're not going to have rolling shutter. You're not going to have in, in, a lot of the issues that we have now. And this is what we have on cell phones, for example. You're doing global shutters on in, cell phones. In immediate, today, I have customers, professionals, who all the time, Jody, what's up? I'm getting all this blackout, I'm getting all this, well, what light are you using under your shutter that isn't a global shutter? And uh, with almost any fluorescent and many uh, LEDs, you get flicker. Yeah, flicker. And, and that's why there's a mechanical shutter. That's why there's a mechanical shutter. That's why you need shutter. a mechanical shutter, versus, or they'd all be electric. You know, and I always, everyone so, asks that, why can't you shoot with a flash with electric shutter? And, and that's why. You're so here's Mr. Sony, right? Here's Mr. Sony, who's gonna be the first global shutter. Where is it? They keep talking about it. He uh, knows when it is, come on. I don't know when Oh, it you is. do too! <laughs> no, no, nothing. Look at his face, look at his face. <laughs> it's on your phone. And, and actually, that's, you know, that's a good example of where the, the global shutter is. There's no mechanics on your phone. So now the phone sensors are, are minuscule. I mean, and when it's pretty interesting to think that you're getting, so, you know, 12 and bigger megapixels it's uh, so on amazing. a sensor that's only this small without any kind of shutter mechanism, and that the whole world is shooting more pictures every day than it's shot in years at one point in, in, in history. Uh, yeah, and, everybody has a camera. And everybody has a camera <laughs> with them all the time, and it's, and it's a global shutter camera. Yeah. Now, let's just enlarge all the capabilities that you have on that phone, okay, and the ability to you know, specifically as we move into newer technology, be able to actually change the depth of field with the way we shoot, uh, as you can on your phones these days. I mean, you know, you can shoot on an iPhone in a portrait mode, and then you can go later and say, oh, is it, well, yep. show me the effect of 2.8 F16. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this, this yeah. is stuff works, that I never yeah. would have dreamed of. Yeah. I mean, if somebody told me back in the 70s when the I was 70s, just getting these, the 70s. 15 years ago. Even 15 years yeah, ago. It's hard to imagine. That, that we would be shooting yeah. without film at higher image quality than, uh, I mean, it's just phenomenal. And speaking of this, the other thing that we've got as an advantage is ISO capability. Yeah. And this is something that I'm truly amazed at. The ISO capability of the sensors on almost every one of these cameras, and really every one of them is pretty much equal in their capabilities. So essentially you kind of have to pick brand, pick right. how you want to see it, whether you know there's a lens lineup that works for you and so forth. but. When, when you think of what the, the capabilities are, my style of shooting these days is I set my camera to manual. Manual, because I'm manual. 
You, you probably still shoot on P because it stands for professional? Green box. Okay. <laughs> the green box. <laughs> P. <laughs> it makes you feel better just to say green box. But when you think I of- shoot on A because I'm a, uh, uh, never mind. <laughs> My camera that I think that is most prevalent in is the Nikon D5. Uh, a buddy of mine, Joey Terrell, magnificent uh, photographer, did a test. He's a Nikon ambassador, but we're straight straight up. He did a test. He shot a, a, a sharpness grayscale on every ISO. And when I printed it to show it to someone, it happened to come up onto two eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper. So I was able to take 56, I think, 56, what is it exactly? What, 5,600? 5,600, no, no, 56,000, oh, 56,400. 56, okay, on a, a high ISO. Whatever it is. And I can put it right next on the top of the other sheet to 100. Yeah, yeah that's pretty. I had yeah. to really stretch. It's hard to believe. To see yeah. the difference. Yeah. What I now say is the new 12,800 is a new 400. Yeah. yeah. And it takes a while for a lot of people to get over that because as we've gone over the last few years, you know, ISO used to like start breaking apart at 3200. Then we got higher and higher. And I'm just, as you said, with your example, the high ISO, I mean, I'm looking at 12,800 and I'm coming out with perfectly usable results. So now yeah. if you want that look, you have to go in at a gorgeous picture and add your, yeah, it's funny. add your pixelization, um, it's add your, if you, grain. <laughs> you look at all these, all these slide raw, the process, all slide these the grain raw processors allow you. It's like, oh my God. Let me ask the guys that are also close to the industry and close to the photographers. Where do you think this thing is going? What's going to be next? Well, it's going to be interesting to see what lenses come out now from Nikon, Canon, and Panasonic. Because um, one thing that's interesting, and you kind of alluded to it earlier, was the mount and the way they design the mount on these new cameras. I think they might do some interesting things that you can't do on a Sony just because of the way the mount is designed to the sensor. It's so much larger. larger. And it's going to be really interesting to see what they come out with for these cameras. I, I think, I think, you know, Sony's incredibly innovative with their cameras and with their glass. They're constantly coming out with stuff. But it's going to be really interesting to see. You talk about, for instance, is what you mean, like the new Nikon Noct. Yeah, exactly. That is not right. that you can only do with that giant. Right, because oh. of the way the mount is designed on the camera, it's so much bigger, you know. And like I was kind of getting at at the beginning of the show, it's not all about these things being small. I mean, it's great if you're doing micro four thirds stuff and you want the camera to be small, but if you're using a full frame camera and you look, I wish we had the Panasonic here just so you can see, because it's, it's huge, it's a huge it's a camera. camera. But the mount on it is much like it is on the Canon, where, and on the Nikon, which we have right here, if you look at the mount, it's so much bigger to the sensor, where if you look at a Sony, Oh, we don't have a Sony. Oh, okay. They're all being filmed. Okay. Hey, Mike, can I borrow your camera? <laughs> <laughs> well, if we had a Sony, it goes right, I mean, it's almost oh. like the corner is right to the edge of the mount. And, and it's kind of amazing how they're getting lenses to work now where they don't vignette. But that's something that's going to change in the future, yeah. I think. It's you, going to be really interesting to see what happens. Do you believe they put a, a larger mount on there because they might want to put a larger sensor in any day? Yeah, or? I mean, they said that. To, I mean, that was the rumor earlier, but I don't no. think so. I, I think, think it's more about how to make it work with that size of a sensor and to make I the agree. glass so much better than you could on a traditional SLR. I think it's really going to happen. Yeah. I think we're going to see stuff that you just could not do with an SLR. I think, I think, I think that's where it's ultimately going to go. <laughs> Plus, there's the other idea that I harp on about how technology doesn't stand still. If what happened in the last 200 years continues, 36 by 24 format will go away. Right. Who, if you can do the same thing in the corner of your eyeglass, what are you making these for? Will technology continue and be able to make higher res, smaller, with high ISO capabilities? If that's the case. Well, look at the new A7R. That's a great example. I mean, as far as the crop yep. goes, you know, you, you've got APS in that camera as well because you can crop it down and get amazing stuff out of this. Right. I mean, we haven't seen it yet, right. but from what we've read, it looks like right. it's really going to take APS and full frame and combine them into a camera that can really do it all. Yeah, That's sorry. really going to be cool. I mean, I've got a guy who's heavy into Olympus who's going to get out of his Olympus because of this new long lens that Sony's coming out with because you can turn on the crop mode and get what? Like Double. 900 oh, equivalent yeah, or something out of it? Amazing. You can get a 900, six. That's gonna be pretty cool. Six, three, five, six. Yeah, yeah that's, yeah. you know, the, the, these are just, just Who's some... that? Puka. Puka? Yeah. Oh. yeah. 
Beep, beep. Hi, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, he's he has a point, you know, yeah, and yeah, he's yeah. kind of like Kevin here. He's got a lot of different camera systems. Why have them all? I've got an issue. The larger point is too. <laughs> but I mean, all these are great cameras. That's the bottom line. I mean, we're we're looking at stuff now where it's it just so incredible. good. So let They're, me ask Phil a question. Customer walks in the in the store. Forget how they're dressed or how they look. Say, I'm looking interested into. I'm interested in buying a digital camera. Are you camera. saying I judge people by how they look? No, I'm saying don't do that. <laughs> what, so what do you do in this world where, like, I wanted to name the show. Everyone's did. Everyone's mirrorless now. Where do you take the customer? I mean, if they have no clue, I kind of no show, clue, I kinda show them everything. It show depends on how much time they've got. I'll kind of pull them all out and kind of show advantages to each one. It's, and disadvantages to each one. I mean, that's why we're there. I mean, you can, you can take the time Robert's and show Robert's camera. You know? I mean, it's... Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I got to go. give Robert's credit. You know, I remember when I was a kid, my dad would always take me to the hardware store and I fell in love with hardware stores because, you know, on a Saturday, Seemed like all the guys were there. Everybody would be off in their own little corners, and you could be talking hardware. Arr, and arr, 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 arr. Oh, yeah. It's, it's kind of cool, you know. It's like, but you can go into Roberts in the same way. I mean, you can talk cameras with these guys. You know, if any of you guys can just get an airplane ticket, you know, come in in the morning, visit Roberts, and, and leave, you're in for a good experience because not only do they have all this cool new stuff, but they got a used department, uh, used Photo Pro, which is just like, which is how On the Rock started. Because Kevin would come in, and Phil and I would just give him hell, <laughs> put put him to, put the nails to him, and we'd have fun and talk. And we said we need to do this. Yeah, we should just do this on camera sometime. And I think anybody that gets together, and I do workshops all the time where we're you know with photographers. It's a great way to to have great discussions, and you know it's an equalizer. I, I work with a, in my workshops sometimes have people from you know twenty different countries. And it's amazing. All the differences that all these countries have, they don't, they're not there when you're taking photography. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of like a smile. We had, we, had a, we had a group in for, my goodness, I'm so upset that uh, Formula One's not in India anymore. But one time we had a, a guy wanting to buy a camera and it took four people to translate to him. <laughs> really? So we had, we had four different countries in the store. We asked people to come in. We actually were able to talk to the gentleman through two other people in between us, <laughs> translating each language. <laughs> Get it, it across. Was, it was great. Uh, we're in the middle of the best days. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, let the good old days be what they are, yeah. but there's not a better time to be out there shooting pictures and enjoying things. And one of the things I need to stress to my audience, and I'm gonna stress it to everybody, and I hope you guys give the same message. We obsess over gear sometimes. I mean, it's like, Oh, yeah, but it's a Canon or it's a Sony or it's a Nikon and that is a this Camera and that and it is. Obsessed with uh, gear? Isn't that ridiculous? Because, <laughs> number one, when, when the end comes down to it and you look at a picture on a wall or something, nobody really knows what it was taken with. Exactly. And, you know, every one of them would have come out with basically the same shot if they used a different camera system. But well, it, no one's made the camera yet that can make me take a good picture. We're, we're still waiting. We're waiting on that one. That's why you got Mary Jane. That's yeah. why I have Mary Jane. <laughs> but I mean, this is this is where we're at these days. So um, go, go take, take a picture. picture. Exactly. What the beauty of it is now is that it's so easy to take a good picture. It's really fun later on when you. I miss that. Well, <laughs> it, it really is. So. Please, you know, we're up here geeking away. We got a lot of gear in front of us. And I know a lot of people would just look, ooh, ooh, wow, look at all that. And, you know, I went and touched Micro Four Thirds for all my life in the world. Why should I shoot APS-C or full frame? And uh, I'm a medium format guy. I'm going for Fuji or Hasselblad. And, uh, you know, I'm, you know I'm, a, I'm a contemplative photographer. I'm going to shoot with a Leica range finder. Do what you want. Yeah, put it you in know, your hands and what feels good, that, the, that's the, what you should just shoot. Just take yeah. the pictures. Yeah. Enjoy the photography, enjoy the moment, and enjoy the experience. Um, I have always stressed that photography should be fun. And some people sometimes criticize me because I use the word fun in what we talk about. But, you know, look, you go through life once. Life is kind of short and you really think about it and you never know Who what's going Who criticizes going. you over having oh, fun? Oh, that's a whole other story. There's, Jeez, uh, get a life. Yeah, uh, That's but, the whole point uh, is to have fun, isn't it? I, I think it is. This is my editorial to everybody. You know, enjoy photography. We're going mirrorless. We're going to see global shutters. We're going to see technology advance at a level we've never thought it could advance to really quickly. Our phones are going to become more capable over the next couple of years. Can't wait to see what the next iteration is. 
the ability to make prints, and I want to stress this too, we spend a lot of time geeking about how to take the picture, but I don't see a lot of people making prints, and we need to get back to printmaking again. So we're going to get into some of that in the near future yeah. also. Because really, truly, in my growing up times, you never really had a photograph until you had it in your Listen, hands and may, you could look at it. May I interject? Something happened today? Go, oh, please. Right now, we're getting ready for a show at Robert's. Uh, a great, a pretty, the best ever we've had first Friday photo show. Really incredible. And I was fortunate to be asked to be one of the jurors. And today, they're putting the pictures up, the photographs up, and I was amazed and said several times, and other jurors agreed with me, I, we had no idea how good the photographs were until today when we didn't see them on a computer screen and as you said yeah. we saw them printed and yeah. it was it was it was shocking it's amazing how much more you see on a print than you do yeah. on a screen i mean it's, it's just it's true and you would think the opposite but really the print is what really shows you it's so amazing. i ask all of you how many of you have made a print recently how many of you have gone to a workshop or traveled to some really beautiful spot, spent a lot of time taking the picture and have never done anything with that photograph. Yeah. I mean, you know, you can throw it on your iPad, your iPhones, and share it all you want on social media. I'm guilty. But we're all guilty. We're all guilty, we're guilty of it, guilty. but that's why I'm putting it out now is that- You're not gonna make a Facebook challenge, are you? No. Oh, good. If there was, it would already <laughs> dump the ice bucket on you. <laughs> but I, uh, next time we come back, we're bringing prints with us. All right. Okay, each of us need to bring six okay. prints. Back to the table here that we photographed over the like uh, time until we do our next episode. And we'll talk about those, what it was like to take them, what it was like to make them, and what we see in the print. And we can critique each other. Oy vey. Yeah, well, <laughs> you were doing pretty good until <laughs> that one came up. Anyway, we could go on and on about this. And I think the point we're trying to say is that let's get over to mirrorless wars uh, terminology, although it's kind of fun when you really think about these camera manufacturers. They're just pushing new gear out on us so fast, it's almost mind boggling. It's all about still taking the picture and having the best gear possible. And we've never had an opportunity, I think, in all of our lifetime to have the kind of gear we have today that will allow us to do things. Like this Olympus, the tracking capability for photographing birds with a small lens handheld, just phenomenal. If you look at the new Sony, the capability of doing multi-shot 240 megapixel files, doing 16 multi-shot uh, images. Yeah, uh, if you look at just any yeah. one of these things. Yeah. And we haven't even talked about the capability these cameras have as far as video goes. Yeah. I mean, that's a whole new bailiwick and that's a whole new area that a lot of photographers that were Nikon just still Z6. photographers. It's crazy right. what this thing That's does why I video. brought that kit. I mean, it, it really is. This thing who knew when it came out, yeah. no one really thought about it. And then when we started using it and customers started shooting with it for video, it's amazing what it does on video. I mean, it really knocked it out. So much so that Nikon came out with that kit. Right. Yeah, the, they yeah. said, so wow, hey, the, we missed the boat. We got to do this. Maker's kit, kit right here. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's extraordinary. So I'd like to thank everybody. Jody, thanks as always for your contributions. My pleasure, my and, friend. Uh, bringing all the uh, data with you <laughs> on, on this. I know you researched that quite a bit. Oh, it took weeks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, and Phil, your contributions are, are always really appreciated. <laughs> Man, a few words, but when he has something to hey. say, everybody listens. <laughs> That's because he carries. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and to all our viewers, if you like this video, and I hope you did, I know it's kind of a long one to sit through, please click the like button, subscribe, and uh, become part of our our big family. Don't forget to stop by photopxl.com where we have a lot of cool articles. We have a community where you can post your own images. We have a forum where you can ask questions and discuss photography with everybody else. It's all about having fun together, taking pictures together. On the rocks. I want to thank Robert's Photo and uh, the event space wherever we are today. <laughs> you want to try again? Was it free? <laughs> you better get it right. <laughs> 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 He's going to insert that here. <laughs> Where the hell are we? <laughs> white picket fence or something? White, the white picket fence events thing. <laughs> what, what's this place called? <laughs> I, for, I forgot. I forgot too. Tinker House Tinker events. House events. <laughs> Thank you, Tinker House.
about all I gotta say. It's a lot of Are fun. Are you sure? <laughs> no, it's... <laughs> Photo Guys. PXL, baby. Photo PXL. On the right. Thank you. If you smile at the end of it, we've done our mission. <laughs>